All right, so hello Instagram and hello Facebook. I'm Philip Ryan Block. I run this little show called The Open Heart Collective. It's a 60 minute live raw conversation about mental health, all the issues that we face in the world today. And the fact that we, the fact of the matter is, we're in this culture, this ecosystem of, we always have to be doing stuff, always on the go, hustle all the time, on the offense, whatever other v key social media vernacular you wanna throw around. But the one thing that we're never on the offense about is our own mental health, and more importantly, the mental health of the community around us. So that being said, I started this show. The show is a look at everybody's stories because I know my story might not impact or have a resonant resonate with all of you guys or even help you guys, but your story is going to help someone else. So that being said, my guest tonight is my new friend, Mr. Kelvin Davis. I am so excited for this conversation. So I know... A lot of people know who you are. They've probably seen you at a bunch of places, probably have your book, which by the way, I'm going to get soon. And, yeah. uh, but what I want to know or introduce yourself for those who might not know who you are. All right. My name is Kelvin, AKA the handle or the man behind the body positive menswear blog, no Torsi dapper. Um, and I am a model author and blogger. Uh, recently, um, I'm, in the current Gap campaign that just came out last Monday, um, and it's nice. an international campaign, so pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen me in that. And uh, yeah, I've just been pretty much grinding and working hard and hustling and writing books and trying to spread the good word of just trying to be kind to one another. I mean, okay, so for those of you guys who don't know, Kelvin and I got connected at SMADCON. And then Tuesday, Tuesday night's episode of this with Michelle Cerna was also a SMADCON connect. So much yes. love to everybody involved with the SMADCON organization, like super excited for all of this. There are so many people joining us on Instagram right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, sorry, I'm back. I got a phone call. Um, all right. You guys can see me, right? On Instagram? Because I can't see me. Yeah, I can so, see you. All right. That's weird because my picture is blank. Um, all right, I'm gonna do one thing quick on Instagram and then we'll get this party going back. All right. All right. Sorry, I just had to make sure that I was re that I was appearing in this conversation. Um, oh. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, so for those of you guys who have never heard of the show before, don't know anything about it, we we just talk. It's a conversation, and you guys get to take part in it. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Kelvin to just share a story because that's what we're here about. We're here to share stories. We're here to talk. We're here to connect. We're here to leave an impact and, and, and inspire. So awesome. take it away. All right. I'm going to tell a story, uh, about my first encounter with random, with random acts of kindness. I was about like eight or nine years old when I first experienced my first random act of kindness. It was my dad went to go uh, get my mother a Diet Coke because my mom loved Diet Coke from the store. Uh, it was pouring down rain. So we went to the gas station uh, nearby at, at our house. There was a guy there that um, had uh, like ran out of gas. Like there was something wrong with his car. And he pretty much kept asking everybody like, you know, like, can you help me? Can you help me? Everybody kept turning him away. Everybody kept right. going in the opposite way. Um, so finally, my dad, you know, after he filled up the gas tank and went in to go get my mom a Diet Coke, he asked the guy, he was like, hey, man, like, do you need anything, whatever? He's like, I ran out of gas, and I think I left my wallet over over, um, over at his girlfriend's house, and he was like, dude, like, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. He's like, back then, you know, there really, really was, was, wasn't cell phones right. when I was like eight or nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was no cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he couldn't phone his girl girlfriend be like, hey, can you bring me my wallet, blah, blah, blah. Dude was stranded, you know? So, right. my... My dad pretty much was like, uh, yeah, just I'll get you um, a, a canister full of gas. We got him like two canisters full of gas. And I just remember being like, what is my dad doing? Like, why is he helping out this dude? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. And then I remember when he got in the car, he told me, he was like, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much money you don't have, when somebody is in need, you need to do whatever you can to try to help them. And that kind of stuck with me like my entire life. And it was, wasn't until like maybe when I was like 22 when it became full circle, there was a guy, I, I literally had just moved into a new neighborhood. It was uh, me and my wife, my 
uh, oldest daughter, who was four at the time, um, she was playing outside and my wife was gardening or something. And there was a guy whose car had broke down about a mile down the street from us. And right. he was trying to like pretty much walk our neighborhood to try to figure out, you know, who can he get a canister of gas from or who he could just borrow some money from. And, you know, he didn't look like the most kept person in the world. He looked, you know, quote unquote, what people would say kind of sketchy, right? So right. Um, my wife comes in and she's like, you know, there's this gal here asking for money. Like, I don't know, blah, blah, I can go talk to him. I go talk to him or whatever. Her story seems kind of iffy. I'm like, uh, I don't have anything for you, right? So when I'm coming up the stairs to go back into my house, it's when I realized, like, there was like this surreal, like superficial feeling that came over me. It was almost right. like, in the Lion King, when like Simba looks in the clouds and sees Mufasa, and he's like, "Right, hey, man, right." Who you? Yeah, it was like one of those moments. But it was my dad, like, and I felt like my dad's presence, even though he's like, I mean, my dad is still alive; he's well and breathing. But I could feel right, like but you felt like he was there looking at you. Exactly, I felt like he was there looking at me. Like, come on, like, I raised you better than this. You know what I'm saying? So I put on my shirt and I switch shoes. I go down the street. I try to find him. I couldn't find him, so I drove around the block. I finally found him. He was in somebody else's yard, and the lady was like fussing at him, like, get away from my porch or whatever. So I got out of the car. Right. I was like, dude, you just talked to me. I'm going to help you out. Let's hop in my car. Now, I I took a chance. I didn't know who this dude Absolutely. was. I mean, this dude could have been a serial killer. Like, this dude could have been anybody. You know, you know what I'm saying? I was right. just taking that risk, you know? So I was like, I got to help this dude out. So I drive him to the gas station, and his car ironically was like broken down about like one block away from an actual gas station. It was oh. kind of surreal because it wasn't like at the gas station, which was because like if it was close? at the gas station, it was so close. Like it was like literally like six steps, like wow. six steps. I was like, bro, you like almost had it. Like you almost made it. And he was like, I know. So then we get him gas and he's like this six, five, like probably 290 pound white guy. Like, you know, big dude. big dude, you know, and I'm like, a, I'm like kind of bigger, but I'm not tall. Like I'm nowhere near six feet. I'm like five, nine strong, you know? So it was like this moment of like sincerity where I hugged him and he hugged me and it didn't, it didn't matter that he was six, five. It didn't matter that I was five, nine. It didn't matter that he was white. It didn't right. matter that I was black. It didn't matter about any of that. It just mattered the fact that we were two humans and he just literally appreciated the fact that I was helping him you know, right. pretty much get from A to B, you know? And he was so thankful. I mean, I never got his name. I didn't need his name. I mean, I didn't need any information from him. You know what I mean? Right. The total right. strangers is helping each other. And it wasn't until then I realized that random acts of kindness are so needed in this world. Like, how can people survive in this world if you're not randomly nice to a person without wanting anything? Like, you don't need to know their name. You don't need to know where they're from. Right. Eight, you don't anything, need to right? just, just do it. Exactly. You just do it. So, I, I have I have a fun story that's pretty comparative to yours, but I was on the opposite side. I okay. was the one that was in I was in a place. So back, okay, I'm 34. This happened when I was like 17, 18. I was okay. on my way into Chicago. I live out just about an hour outside the city. And I was going to a part of the city I'd never driven to myself. And I'm like, all right. So I printed out MapQuest, right? Like, remember the days where you actually had to print out the fucking maps? Yeah. But like, yes. like you, and you're like driving <laughs> and like looking like, um, is this the street? And that happened. So I had printed out a map. Well, in Chicago, there's apparently two things called Tinley Park. There's Tinley okay. Park, an actual park, or at least there was, I'm not sure if it's still there. And yeah. then there's Tinley Park, the city which is like a suburb. It's like Wicker Park, right? Yeah. So the map that I had led me to tin, um, the, the, the park, not the city. So by this point in time, I had crossed over the Skyway toll, which at the time was like $4 each way. I'm on this broke punk kid, and yeah. I'm stuck on the south side of Chicago as the sun is beginning to set in a car that's running out of gas. Damn. I call my dad, I call my dad. I'm like freaking the hell out. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Like, uh, like, what do I do? He's like, go into the gas station, hand, like put your phone up to the thing and, and I'll give the dude my credit card number over the phone. 
Okay. Wow. Like we're talking through like eight inches of bulletproof glass because it's the <laughs> south side of Chicago. Yeah. And the guy behind it is like, I can't do that. So I go back out to my car, which is like this beat up old, like white Buick, right? Like just yeah. like completely like decked out, like punk rock stickers on the back, the window covered, like just a total <laughs> punk kid's car. And a, a, I'm freaking out. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I'm 17, 18 years old, stuck on the South side of Chicago. Like yeah. that, that's got bad things written all over it. Bad. Especially the fact that it was starting to, the sun was starting to set. I mean, we're yeah. off of Cicero, like not a good neighborhood. <laughs> anyway. Um, so all of a sudden my dad hears this like bump, 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 bump on my car window. I like drop the phone because like so the phone like ends up between like me and the seat in the car like and so my my dad muffled talk in the background yeah and there's this guy he he rapped on my window and he's like i i kind of overheard what you were going with or like the problem that you were having here's 20 bucks fill up your tank and get out of here wow and like so we're ta we're talking about i mean i don't talk around mental health like kindness is so key Right, because Very much so. the biggest the biggest thing that we're facing right now is the fact that nobody's wanting to talk. Like I mean, I spent thirty minutes writing this like massive narrative last night that went out across all my social media. That was like the only re there's two reasons why people don't talk. Yeah, they they're too afraid of what everybody in this digital world would think, and then secondly, they feel like they're alone. And in both of those moments. I, I was that guy that you t that you hugged at that gas station. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I wasn't physically that guy, but I was that guy. Yeah. Because I dealt with the same circumstance and yeah. like not knowing what you're going to do. We, a lot of us face it. I mean, I, I, I was inspired to write that article last night because I read that zombie boy got killed himself. Yeah, dude, that was so sad. Like, like, Talk about. I'm a, oh, I, yeah. I love tattoos. Like it's my yeah. thing, and yeah, that, that was really dude sad. was an inspiration. Yeah, I read that, and I'm I literally put everything else off to the side that I was working on, and I said I've got to write. Yeah, and I shared it with some close people before I posted it, and they're like, I needed to see this right now. And then the amount of feedback that I've gotten, like in response to it, just from sending it out privately last night, and then people seeing it is just like this is. The world needs more, the world needs openness, but the world also needs safety. Yeah. And like in, in your work, dude, like I didn't, I didn't really know of you until ahead of the conference when I did my research on everybody that was there. Yeah. But like your work is inspiring, man. Like what, what I want to talk about right now is like, what led you to the spot in your life where you are now? Like, what did you have to go through? What was, what was the inspiration for, the Kelvin Davis that we all know now? Man, uh, I would have to say it started with, honestly, meeting my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife. Um, we were hit with an unexpected pregnancy when we were both seniors in, in college. Wow. So yeah, I was 21, about to be 22, and she was, I can't hear you over here on Facebook. I can't hear you on Facebook. I can hear you on Instagram. Fine. Did your headphones die? Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> we'll get it figured out. Mm -mm. Here. Uh, exit out of your... Facebook of, of that little click on the little green toggle button and then come back in the upper left hand corner of your screen a little window yeah so bounce off and then come back on all right technical glitches everybody don't worry we'll get this fixed this is what happens when you're talking across the country.
By the way, to everybody who's watching on 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 link or LinkedIn, fucking Instagram, Jesus. All right, can you hear me now? Uh, I got you now. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. So yeah, drop your phone volume back down. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, so everybody who's watching on, on Instagram, I want to say a massive amount of thanks because like, there's a lot of other things you could be doing with your Friday night, but you're choosing to hang out with Kelvin and I, and that means the world to me because the more of us that we get behind this message, the community that we build around this, the more things happen. I mean, we're able to change things. We're able to rapidly grow and, and create a positive impact. And I don't know about you guys, but the world that we live in now is kind of messed up and it needs to get better. So, but the only way that it's going to get better is for us to make it better. There are no politics that are going to make it better. It's us. It's always been on us. So, um, all right. So back, back yeah. to it. Um, yeah. So uh, pretty much like having to, you know, grow up and be a dad, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to be a dad really young, you know? And, uh, you know, I, did, I dropped out of school for one semester and I decided to wait tables and bartend and all that stuff to save money. Right. My wife gave birth in December. I mean, my wife graduated in December, gave birth in January. Wow. So took, yeah. So she like walked across the stage like eight, eight and a half months, almost nine months pregnant, like full blown belly, everything walking across the stage. So that like uh, spring semester, I was supposed to do my student teaching. I was supposed to, you know, finish up school, graduate in May, hopefully get a job in August or whatever. You know how to turn right. it. So I did it. Obviously, I waited tables, did all that jazz, um, and you know, I went back to school that fall some semester, did my student teaching, and then in the spring, um, I got my first job, like doing. Uh, I was a autism specialist for wow. a yeah for a kid um, that was in elementary school, and then my second job was doing English as a second language at a high school. Um, and then kind of two ends of the spectrum there. Yeah. Right. And then, um, and then I went into the art classroom cause that was my major. I went in it and went to go teach art and the trials and tribulations I had to get to in order to get to the point of, you know, even having an art job because I mean, being in the South, right. there, there was no art jobs available. I mean, now there's a ton available because, you know, teach, people and there's not very many available in the North. So yeah, you kind of, like switched, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because people are like, uh, you know, quitting the teaching profession at this point, you know, obviously, you know, right. I used to teach and now I no longer do because I'm pursuing this full time. And it's all the trials and tribulations that led for me to go from that to a teacher and from being a teacher leading up to going to pursuing being a model and author full time, you know, like getting rejection letters from like schools that I applied to teach at, getting rejections from i mean the amount of times i've got rejected from a job i'm like it can't be this hard to teach art it can't be this hard like <laughs> somebody's gonna want me you know what i'm saying it can't be this difficult right you know it was like the amount of times i would get that rejection letter thank you for your interview time blah blah we although we went with another candidate will we will keep we'll your keep on people. file exactly the little political stuff right so you know i was just like I, there, there are plenty of days where I felt down. I was like, I mean, I'm not making enough money to provide the things I want to for my family, this and that, you know. And you get kind of depressed about it, and you get kind of in a in a funk. But you got to, you know, I guess pick your pick your suit up, pick yourself up from your bootstraps and keep it moving, you know. And I, I, I coined my parents for helping me deal with uh, negativity and deal with rejection because they taught me how to persevere. I mean, being the person that I am, you know, being like a, a a black kid in the South, being raised in white suburbia, it was like natural for me right. to deal with rejection. It was natural for me to have things not go my way. You know, it's just like a natural right. way of life, you know? So when things never went my way, when things were, you know, were the opposite way that they were supposed to go, I always knew how to roll with it. I always knew that things would go my way eventually if you keep working hard, you keep right. being positive. And you keep being kind, you know, and that's just kind of how my motto was, you know. I mean, that that's amazing. Let's talk about that for a minute. So, yeah, rejection is a is a big part of mental health, right? Because the more that you oh, feel yeah. rejected and dejected, like the worse you're going to feel about you. 
Yes. So for you, for your parents to have teach, taught you perseverance at such a young age, knowing kind of what you had to go through. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a blessing. That's a massive blessing because a lot of the, I mean, I've talked to a lot of, a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different stories. And it always compels me. Like when you come from, when, when there's a strong family structure around empathy and support and, and like, allowing yourself to be strong but also knowing that like your weakness isn't always just weakness like like your vulnerability isn't weakness and exactly. like that's what i mean and i know you're probably teaching this to your kids right now i've got a boy and a girl and like i think my son cries more than my daughter yeah and um but like i'm empathy is such a big part of all of this and having that like i i'm glad that you had that because i've had a lot of people on the show who haven't had that yeah. and and but they persevere and they're badasses anyways and yeah. so but i mean everybody has a different story which is like is the entire point of this show is we all have different stories but everybody gets inspired from different things so exactly. um this is about the time in the show where i take a quick break from the story and I say, if, if you're an individual who's struggling, who feels like they're alone in their situation, who doesn't know what they need to do, like doesn't know where to go, doesn't know who the resources are, I literally try to make myself available to anybody and everyone who's struggling. So that being said, my cell phone number, the one that I'm talking to you right now on Instagram is literally in my Instagram profile. Call me. If I can't help you. And oftentimes it's not that you guys even need help. And I know that, and that's an important key thing here. Oftentimes if you're struggling, you don't need people telling you what to do. You just need people exactly. simply wanting to listen, offering their fucking ear for, even if it's 20 minutes for you to vent it out. Like that's what helps. It might not help permanently. It might not be a real long-term solution, but it's going to be a solution that's going to get you through that tough time. Like, I make myself available, but I also know a myriad of other resources that I have at my disposal to get you help. So if you're struggling or know somebody who is struggling, please reach out. And if not me, find someone else to reach out to and allow yourself to be open and willing to talk and willing to be vulnerable because it's when you allow yourself to be vulnerable that your greatest strength actually shows. So anyways, back to the story. Um, that was beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, this, this came up last night when I, when I was talking to a few of my close trusted advisors, um, I, I, st I stated, you can't build an empire without people and a legacy is nothing without a story. It's true. So like there are certain people that'll be in and out of your life, but value them when they're there. They yeah. might not be there forever because a wise person once told me people enter your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. Yeah. And you don't always know which at the beginning, but you'll figure it out inevitably. Yeah. But um, so because while, while this show is really about breakthrough and about coming through dark times, we have obviously kind of have to talk about the darkness sometimes. And um, mm. what were those moments for you? What were those moments where you were not your strongest self? Um, or maybe when it wasn't so good? And you didn't have, you might may not have had the support structure that you had that that exists for you now. Like what? Let's let's talk about that the, that time in your life because everybody has it. Man, I would have to say that time in my life was honestly from the years of 2014 to about 2015. It's about like okay. a year right after I started my blog, and you know. Um, I started my blog as like an outlet, you know, for people to talk about, you know, men's body issues, mental health, all that jazz. Right. Because it was, you know, I had a bad shopping experience at Express. And, you know, a lot of women obviously can attest to this, but having, you know, sales associates tell you that you're too fat, you're too big to shop at a place, or whatever, being body shamed while you're shopping. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys right. don't really have to deal with that. But when they do deal with it, they don't have an outlet it to talk sucks. about. It sucks. It sucks because they like feel sad or like shit. Like, do I am am I really fat? Am I really dead? Blah 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 blah. So you feel some kind of way about yourself, but you don't have an outlet to speak about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you bottle it up. 
you get angry, you get sad, depressed, or whatever. And that was around the time. Worse, when, you start yeah. drinking, you start smoking, you start taking yeah. it out on everybody else around you rather exactly. than identifying what the problem is. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was doing. I was I was angry. I was lashing out. Right. I was lashing right. out. I had low tolerance, low patience, like like um, like whenever my daughter would throw a temper tantrum, I would like just lose it. You know, I would just like leave the house or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, w- I wasn't mentally s- sane, really. You know what I mean? Stable. And yeah. Stable. And, you know, it took a lot for me to really come out of that and talk to my mom and talk to my wife and talk to people and be like, you know, I don't really feel like the best version of myself. Right. I don't feel like the best version of Kelvin. Like, I feel like I've lost somewhat of what I used to be, you know? Right. And I don't know if I lost it due to, you know, I lost a lot of empathy, you know, due to teaching mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, having to deal with a lot of, stuff in the inner city, you know, kids bringing stuff to school, right. kids cursing at you, you know, you kind of lose empathy because you deal with so much strife on a daily basis. It's right. just like, you just don't really give a shit anymore. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. like, it's whatever, like, you know, it's just, it's just right. the way the game is played, you know? And it's like, almost like I lost that sense of empathy. I lost that sense of like, I can relate to somebody, you know? Right. So then mm-hmm. when I started to realize that and start to like realize that you know, I can't change the way, you know, my students behave on on a daily basis, but I can change the way that it affects me. I can change the way that I react to it. Right, exactly. And that's when things started to click for me, started to understand like people don't have to really, people always think that somebody has to conform in order to talk to you a certain way or speak to you a certain way. But like some people just have a personality and they're just going to talk to you in that kind of way or they're just going to do this in that kind of way but right. it's your ability to react you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like if mm-hmm. somebody approaches you negatively you have a choice to either react negatively back be mm-hmm. positive or just ignore it and keep moving you know what right. i mean and the way you react is life-changing because it, affects, you know, it affects everything right so that was really when i realized that reactions are like a huge part of life. Like mm-hmm. the way I reacted because of the way that I felt was unacceptable. Right. It was unacceptable. Like these people around me love me. They love me whether I was fat, whether I was skinny, whether I was bald, whether, and you know, I was also dealing with hair loss, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I was dealing with like my hair falling out. I'm like, I'm only 25. Like how, like how the hell is, 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 is my hair falling out? Like this is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like right. I was dealing with a lot, you know? And it was mm-hmm. like kind of de- depressing. I'm like, you know, my hair is falling now. Like I'm gaining weight. Like, you know, I feel like I'll never, you know, be this uh, this person that I want to be for like people to look up to and, and to be inspired by. Do you know what I mean? Right. So then when I kind of found that, it just hit me because I knew, and I always say 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 this. I knew no matter how big I was. No matter how much I stuttered, no matter how what negative attribute I had about myself, I was always, and I still would say this to everybody watching, listen to me closely, okay? I has always <laughs> been the best dressed guy in the room, always. Dude, Here's like that. I couldn't. Um, I'm everything. like, all right, I'm gonna try and dress up a little bit for this guy. I'm like, typically I like wear a t-shirt, and I'm like, no, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like I can't do that, man. Like I've got I've got the notoriously dapper guy on my fucking show. I can't be like <laughs> slumming it tonight. But um I mean it's I get that though, because I mean being a guy, it's we don't get that outlet very often. Like yeah. We we struggle with weight. We struggle with like I'm not I'm not a small guy. You've met me in person. Yeah. Like I'm six foot two, like a solid two twenty. Yeah, and like strong it's not easy being always being a big guy like and i mean not that i mean i'm overly confident in certain things but like i mean i've struggled with weight because i mean go back seven years ago when i started my record label and all that and all that led to everything here like i was a solid 185 i was biking 48 40 miles a week like i ate well i was like 
but I bet I had transitioned out of being the unhealthiest I'd ever been. I was 250 pounds. I was drinking a bottle of bourbon a week or a bottle of bourbon every other day. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Like I was not a healthy person because for me, my, my, that, that cigarette or that drink wasn't, was an out. Right. I didn't want to talk about this anymore. So I'm I'm gonna go smoke or I'm gonna go drink. So even if that separation was only for a second, the separation still happened. Yeah. And then I realized that that was my coping mechanism. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. Fuck that shit. I can't, I can't keep doing that. Yeah. Because I was, like you said, I wasn't being the dad I needed to be. My son was about two. Like I, my, I was in a relationship that was fucking struggling. Yeah. And struggling, it was on its way out at that point in time. Yeah. But like, I was losing me. I was in a job that, that was in a job that I hated. And I don't even use that word. That's how much I detested that job. I, or the people that I did that job for my clients that I was working with. I love my clients and often most of them are still friends and colleagues to this day. But I, I was not doing me. And so I said, fuck it. I had a breakdown in my kitchen. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was in the little L shaped part of my kitchen cabinet. And I just, my, my now ex-wife, but wife at the time was battling eating disorders and, and a bunch of other mental issues. And my son comes up to me and he's like, daddy, are you okay? And every part of me just, all the gaskets broke. Everything was just, I like, I became a puddle on the floor because I'm like everything I've always wanted to do. I'm not doing right now. I'm sacrificing myself. I'm sacrificing my happiness. By the way, guys, at that point in time in my life, I would have never been doing a video like this. I would have never been smiling. You would have never seen my teeth. Wow. And like, but I knew that that's like, I had to go through that pain because all of that has led me here. Yeah. And like one of one of the person, one of the people that had tuned in on, on Facebook is somebody I've known through most of this process and has been a ride or die with me from the beginning. And like now we're running businesses together. So it's pretty dope, but like it's, you never, you have to go through the darkness. Sometimes you have to go through that struggle, but at the same point in time, like you're going to be stronger on the back end yeah. than anybody else who doesn't struggle. Like I love my struggle. My struggle, I thrive. Yeah. Same. I love it. I've been saying for a while now, like my superpower is my innate, my inhuman ability to be comfortable in uh, while being uncomfortable. Like, I thrive in being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like put it, to, doing a live show about mental health. It's an uncomfortable situation. Like our conversation has been pretty low key, not as dark as some of the others that I've had, but yeah, like this is some deep stuff and it's uncomfortable. It but like, and I, I even see you like, you're kind of like, you're making that body language like, Ah, uh, there's some st- like I want to go down this road, but I'm like, uh, how's it gonna work? So, I love how your Instagram is, by the way, just like circling. <laughs> yeah, it's trying. Hold on, okay, there we go. It's it it gets it sends you off for some. Okay, are we back on? Can you can you hear me? Oh, cancel. Send a okay, request for you. Okay, go live. All right, we're we're going live. We're we're back. Instagram. Okay, um, okay. We're back. There we go. I think so. Connecting, connecting. Come on, come All on. All right. I hear All right, you. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. There right. we go. There we go. All right. I'll yeah, man. I so... don't hear you. Really? Damn it. <laughs> Every <laughs> single time. Technology is trying to get in my way. What the hell? Can you hear me now? I hear you on Facebook, but, but I don't hear you on Instagram. Instagram. Well, damn it. This is tragic. Is it? Wait a second. Is it connected to your Bluetooth? Is it trying to connect yes, to your Bluetooth? It is. Ah, there you go. Okay, gotcha. Can the you hear Bluetooth me now? will mess it up. Yeah, I got you now. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Word. <laughs> yeah, man. But but just like you were saying, like the struggle is everything. And I tell people all the time, life is about the duality. Like it's about 
Like there is no darkness without light. There is no light without dark. Like there is no rainy days without sunny days. Like you can't have both. Like you have to have both in order for one to be the greatest. Like you have to. Right. Right. It's destined. I mean, that's just the way life is. And I, I remember when I was in the investment world, I was an uh, investment advisor, big wealth, like wealth management type guy, right? And uh, one of the one of the guys in one of the conferences said, "Every se- or seven out of every ten years is a down year on the stock market." We never talk about the three. We always talk That's about true. the seven. Wow. And I'm like, well, shit. So that means the market is down seventy percent of the time. I'm like, Dang. holy shit. Yeah. But keep in mind, when things are down, growth inevitably happens. Yes. I I had this, I did this vlog several, uh, about a year and a half, a year or so ago. And I had done a bike ride with my son and where, where, where my family and I live is this kind of hilly, like suburbia neighborhood, right? And I remember we were talking about, we, we were like, oh man, it was so hard to pedal uphill, right? Yeah. But then when you go down, it's so easy. Yes, facts. So think about it. Momentum. Yeah. Momentum happens quickly going down. Very true. But doesn't happen quickly going up. That's so true. like let let let's flip momentum as it relates to around mental health, right? You hear you wake up and you have that thought like it's gonna be an amazing day. But then you have to grind, right? It takes a little bit of work, and but yeah, you're yeah. there. You make it. Let's talk. Let but let's have the flip side of that. You wake up and say, "Ah, oh, it's a fucking terrible day. Like the weather, shit. Like I fucking stub my toe. Coffee was too cold. What? What? Whatever bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we have that. And then yeah. what happens next? All of a sudden, that bad that bad ten minutes of your morning becomes a bad half of the day. Becomes a bad rest of the day becomes a bad week becomes a bad month becomes a bad year because momentum is often quickest going down yeah it is so like you've got to for like it's all about reprogramming how you think and you have to do that so like me and for anybody who's new to the show hasn't heard me say this before but i don't stop moving because when i stop moving the darkness catches up yeah that's why I'm always working. That's why I'm always doing something. That's why I'm always on the go. Because I know for me, that's my best way to avoid my own depression. Not that I'm running from it because I address my issues, but that allows me to be productive, proactive, moving. Because when you have movement, then you have momentum. And momentum, when you when it works, towards your benefit is a good fucking thing. Oh yeah. So, um, so let, let, let's, let's talk to the men in the room and, and even, and even the ladies listening, yeah. um, body positivity, like it, it, body image issues are huge. They are. I mean, and that's a big contributor to mental health. Facts. So like, I mean, that leads to eating disorders and most people don't realize that more me- oftentimes men, struggle with eating disorders it just goes undiagnosed because nobody talks about it yeah so and and often people forget that body positivity just really isn't about being big and being small it's just about bodies in general that are marginalized black bodies brown bodies any like it has to do with race anybody 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 you know what i'm saying so people always are like well it's like well it's pretty much for fat people like no it's not it's for everybody and it's especially for people that feel marginalized. Like as a bigger black guy in America, I feel marginalized. Absolutely. So body positivity for me is like, you know, it's hard, you know, when I used to tell my students, I was like, I know it's hard for somebody to tell you to be comfortable in your own skin when you're gunned down because of your own skin, right? It's hard to tell them be comfortable with who you are when you're judged and followed around the store because of who you are. Do you know what I'm saying? It's hard, you know? I, I want to say I know what you're saying. Yeah. But I've not lived it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I the, the only thing, and it's not even close, but I mean, I was a punk rock kid. So, I mean, I had the mohawk. I had the ch- spikes. I had the chains. Like, yeah. 
And there was one day I remember, like, I literally got booted out of a fucking Abercrombie and Fitch store because I was a punk kid. And I just literally <laughs> sat down in the middle of the store and didn't move. Yeah. I literally was banned from the store until the store got out of the mall. And then, like, <laughs> but I did that as a social experiment more so than anything else. But it was like, but no, I, I, but being a bigger guy, like, I, I get that. Like, yeah. Other, I mean, but at what you just talked about, I, I don't know what that's like. Yeah. And people have to understand, like, that's what body positivity is all about, right? It's about all that stuff, right? And people like to generalize it just to being about, like, big people or, like, fat bodies. And it's just so much bigger than that. And I just wish that people could have, could understand the broader spectrum of what it means, especially for men, you know what I'm saying? Because as a man, body positivity means that you're going to be comfortable and love yourself through, right. through, through your hair loss, through your gain through your weight gain or through, you know, when you lose your ability to have an erection and you got to take Viagra or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like shit right. happens to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just because you're a guy doesn't mean that you're invincible to shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit's going to happen to your body. You know what I'm saying? And your body and your ability to mentally move forward, even though your body wasn't, isn't the same as what it was when you were a teenager. Right. Is body, is body positivity. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, that's right. literally the definition of it, to accept your body as the way it is, whether you're 20 or whether you're 40, whether you're 50, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. But and so let, let's talk about accepting it, but yeah. still desiring to make change. Right. Because not exactly. I mean, we yeah. can accept that we're that we're a little overweight or that whatever, whatever other thing that you want to throw around or we're not we're not big enough. Right. I'm six foot two, but I'm 180 pounds. Like eh, I'm skinny. So like yeah. it works both ways. So it's just, I love hearing your kids in the background, by the way. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they if are. Mine, if mine were home oh. right now, they would literally have been barging in here trying to like be up in on the camera because that's what yeah. they do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's how, what we do to create impact in, in ourselves and then when we're able to create it in ourselves, replicating that in others is so big. Like yeah. I, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to throw Michelle under the bus, by the way, completely and utterly right now. She's like, I've had a crush on him for so long. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm to Thank I totally you, called her out. Right. I said, yeah. she, but he was like, she had mentioned like, it's inspiring his message. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I've got a crush on the guy for that. Like, Thanks, man. That's strong. Because it, it's because we could go one of two ways, right? We we could go down the we could go down the pipeline of making it about ego, about making it about like what we've accomplished, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like the message that you're speaking cl so closely rings true to the message that I'm speaking. It's like the only way that we make changes to one accept the current situation that we're in, and exactly. then do something about it. Yes. And that's the entire ethos behind why I'm doing what I'm doing and everything that I'm doing. I started a music company, music industries, fuck. that's why I started it. I wanted to create yeah. change. Yeah. I haven't like that. I got into the creative agency space because again, the creative industry is fucked because Ty Lopez has sold it to people that you can spend $5,000 and all of a sudden you know how to run a marketing campaign. Mm. Like yeah. every, it, everything is about, the beginning and an end uh, uh, and God, I just want the world to be better. I want your yeah, kids same. to grow up in a space where they're feeling where they're accepted and they're loved. I want my kids growing in a space up in a space where they're accepted and they're loved. Like, right? like my son didn't want to get glasses at first because he was afraid that people would pick on him. Like, yeah. and he was seven. Like, come yeah. on guys. Like, yeah. And, and, and I know like, and honestly, as it starts with us, it does. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. Like it wholeheartedly beginning to end starts with us as parents yeah. because they see literally everything that you do and they replicate it. So if you wonder, exactly. if you wonder why your why kids in the school are not treating your kids well, think about it. Yeah. Look at the parents, look at the behavior, observed behavior is oftentimes yeah. what's going to lead you there. Yeah. So lead I mean, with love. 
Always. Kids aren't born to be bullies, right? It's like crazy. Ooh. It's like it's like kids aren't born to like be racist. Kids aren't born to be any of these things. Kids are not born to be that way. It's right. like what society and what parents teach them. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And my dad told me this a long time ago. I think I was like 12 when he told me this. We were sitting down at a dinner table. He was like, Kelvin, let me tell you something. I was like, yeah, dad. He was like. And he probably had that dad voice going. We all know oh, what the yeah. dad voice is. Yeah, strong. Yeah. It goes about two or three octaves lower than it should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, you can, you can do a lot to change this, to change that. But one thing you can't change is what a man teaches in, in his household. And that stuck with me because I was like, what does he mean by that, right? But then when I got to high school, it all started to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it was like, no matter how I tried to change people socially or whatever, try to show people that why can't gay people like be accepted? Like what's wrong with him being gay? Like, yeah, he's gay, but he doesn't like you. Like gay people have standards just, just, just like anybody else does. Doesn't necessarily mean just because he's gay, he likes every guy. He obviously doesn't like you. You know what I'm saying? So I used to tell people that in high school, but their parents taught them so much hate about gays and so much hate about mm -hmm. interracial dating and all this other stuff. Like it was like crazy to me. I like that people in their household taught people not to love people because they love differently. It was weird for me because right. I wasn't raised in that way. Neither was I. Neither yeah, was yeah. I. So it was weird for me. I mean, my sister is gay. And she's married to her wife, and they are about to have their first child. You know, her are wife, you new uncle. Yes, I, I, I will be awesome. a new uncle. February fourteenth is 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 their due date, so I will be a new uncle February fourteenth, and it's really awesome because it's like you know they're going to raise this beautiful child in this world, and who's to say that they can't like they can't love and they can't raise. I, try, right. I mean, it's just, it's just, it flabbergasted me when I was in high school how many people were taught that. It was it, crazy it, to me. Like, I just, I just didn't realize that. Age, aren't we? Close. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm 30. So I'm 30 30, so yeah, pretty close. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, guys, beginning and end, it ends with a beginning with us, ends with us. Like, we, it's on us to make this space better. It's yeah. on us to make this space safe. Exactly. And together, and I, I love saying this in particularly, together our voices are louder than they are apart. They are. So let's 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 get loud about this. Because this is a public health concern that nobody's paying that very few are paying attention to. So yeah. We're getting ready to wrap up. Hard to believe it's been almost almost an hour already. Like, yeah, that's probably, crazy. <laughs> that's why I set these things up to run an hour because it's like, all right, yeah. there's no way in hell we can get this done in 20 minutes. <laughs> like, I've, like I, I have never appeared on a podcast or an episode of anything that has aired for less than 30 minutes. Yeah, my guys, people would be like, we do it a 10 minute episode. I'm like, no. That's no. crazy. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> like, it doesn't ever run 10 minutes. Like, any yeah. any podcast ever, 30 tops or more. 30, yeah. Like, easily. it's easily. Yeah. Because, I mean, we need these conversations. Like, and, mm -hmm. and I hope that if only one person watching, listening, because, again, it's going to be available in audio form later, listening to this, take something from it and makes their life better. Like that is the sole reason this entirety of this show exists. This collective yeah. of amazing human beings exists. I mean, I'm 24 episodes in, I'm in the middle of season two. Like I, I, I make nothing from this. Like I'm investing my time and all my guests are like, there's no, like, like nobody's sponsored by anything. Like I'm literally, this is because this conversation needs to happen. Yeah. And, um, so Kelvin, for, I mean, I know a lot of people on Instagram are watching and, and they they obviously know where to find you because I'm guessing most of the Instagram audience has probably come from your world today, which, <laughs> which is good. Like that, that's why we do the duality of both. But yeah. uh, for those of people who are going to be watching or listening after the fact, um, let where's the best place for people to connect with you? I'm obviously I'm going to include all your links and stuff like that in the descriptions yeah, yeah. later, but like. Where's going to be the best place for everybody to find you? 
the best place for people to find me is on Instagram because I respond to direct messages. I respond to comments, all that stuff. Um, even Facebook messages. If you send me a Facebook message, I will reply to it. And emails, I'll get back to you in like a day or two because I get so many of them. But like DMs, you know, they're just so easy to answer, you know? So right. if anybody ever wants to ask me something like you want, you know, anything, just DM me. Notoriously Dapper is the handle, and yeah, and I'll respond to you within like a few hours. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. I mean, yeah. guys, literally, we're we are two incredibly busy human beings. I know. I mean, between being dads and being exa- and CEOs and and entrepreneurs yeah. and 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 just generally busy guys, like this is my sole mission in life, next to being a good dad. This is it. Everything else is will come. So yeah. that being said, I'm so humbled and blessed for everybody who took an hour out of their Friday night to join us in this conversation. Like it honestly means the world to me. Um, when starting out this adventure four months ago, I didn't think it was going to become what it's become. And I didn't think I was going to have the amazing people that I've had. And uh, I'm humbled. I, like to end the show like I end every other piece of video content that I put out with, with this little mantra that, that I've had that it, inevitably I'm going to turn into a t-shirt and then I'm probably going to just donate them all because like, fuck monetization. I literally built my companies with no money and that's my claim to fame. I've built three, two companies and have not spent any money, any investors, anything else. Anyways, um, I like to end it with this. Be happy. Number one, have fun. Number two, and hustle your fucking ass off. Number three, but remember, there's no amount of hustle that can bring you happiness or fun. So you have to have those two first. Exactly. And then, and then you got it. And then you guys, you got to find time to breathe because we, I know your head down grinding, you're working, you're doing your thing, but breathe. Literally, if you say nothing else other than the word breathe, it forces you to breathe. Yeah. So that being said, my friends, thank you so much for joining me. Instagram, we're about to get that. You're coming up on an hour long kind of conversation, <laughs> Mark. Flash, uh, flash, flash, flash. But um, so this, uh, unfortunately on Instagram, this video will die off in the next 24 hours, uh, but it will remain forever on Facebook. And then the video form of this will also be available on my YouTube channel uh, on Sunday night. Uh, I'll make sure that Kelvin gets the link so he can share it as well. And then for you guys who are audio podcast listeners, this does exist in audio form also. That is all the major ones, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, it's everywhere. Just search the Open Heart Collective. There are 22 episodes leading up to this week. Two more episodes or two episodes that have come out this week, including this amazing one. Um, and then next week I'll be back with two more. So my friends, thank you so much for taking an hour of your time. It means the world to me. And I know, I know, I know that together if we get, if we get loud about this issue, about this problem, and we create safe places for people to share their stories and allow themselves to be vulnerable. That's when amazing things happen and true change can occur in this world until then, unfortunately we're stuck. So make it what you will. Do what you can, but do it with love and do it with fucking kindness because you've got one fucking shot at this thing. You don't come back. So make it worthwhile while you're here. So I'm going to say bye cool. Instagram. Facebook will have a little wrap up here. Bye so Instagram. Bye, bye Instagram. <laughs> come on. Ending. Ending. All right. Yeah. Dude, seriously? The most. Thank you. Thank like, you, man. I mean, I know we're still going live on Instagram or on Facebook right now. And, and I yeah. want you to hear this Facebook on Instagram. During this hour, we had 218 people view this. Wow. 218 people plus a couple that have been bouncing in and out here on Facebook took time out of their Friday night. A Friday night where a lot of people are like, woohoo, turn up, right? Go party, go do what they do. What they do. 218 people took time out of their life to pay attention to this. Whether they were here yeah. for 10 seconds or otherwise, each and every one of you guys matters so much to me. 
And like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm always humbled after doing one of these episodes because it's, you take time out of your, out of your life with your family to, to, to do this with me. And, um, yes. like we're doing this for a reason because we're the, the, the good that needs to occur in this world, it needs to occur in abundance and it needs to occur so rapidly. Yeah. And the only way that we're going to do that is to actually do the work. And like, I, I don't know. I'm just feeling incredibly humbled for literally everything. Um, Kelvin brother, literally you, you, you we're family now, my man, like Strong. anything you yes, need, sir. hit me up. Let me know. Um, anybody out there on Facebook who watches this or listens to this after the fact or YouTube even, uh, or any of the audio forms that listen to this, um, humbled and thank you. Um, and then tune in next week because we'll have two more guests. I don't know. Typically don't have those figured out until like Saturday night. <laughs> but because then I announce everything Monday night and we roll into Tuesday and it's a whole process. Yeah. But, um, awesome, brother. Well, I'm going to end this broadcast. So say bye-bye yeah. on Facebook. All right. Bye-bye, Facebook. And then we'll hang